Okay, without getting into any discussion about cold air masses and warm air masses and the moisture um, content of a warm air mass, we're just going to speak directly to cloud formation, storms, and uh, the development of lightning. So we'll start off by um, our warm air rising into the sky. And as that warm air rises, it will obviously cool and the water vapor in that air will condense and form a large cloud and the shape of this cloud with this flat top is a cumulonimbus cloud and it's basically your your basic storm cloud we'll call it and it has this anvil shape, they call it, it's nice and flat on top. And so the water vapor um, condenses into this huge cloud, and the cooling air in turn will sink because the cooler air is more dense. So we end up with this classic convection current. And within this cloud, we have these formations of ice crystals these small ice crystals. And with these convec this convection current of uh, rising air and, and um, sinking air called updrafts, updrafts, and obviously this would be a downdraft. With these updrafts and downdrafts, the icicles of these little ice crystals are going to kind of go on this, you know, roller coaster ride. And it's going to go up, and it's going to go down, and it's just going to kind of tumble all through this cloud. And as it goes through this cloud, there's going to be a great amount of friction. And that friction, friction will cause a, um, a separation of charge. It's going to remove and rub some of these electrons off and you end up with kind of like um, a situation kind of like a battery. So let's come over here. And so you end up with a positive charge, oops, positive charge at the top of the cloud and a negative charge, oops, a negative charge at the bottom of the cloud. And that's because of the um, all the collisions that these ice particles were making inside that cloud. It's like um, when you rub your feet on the carpet and you uh, shock yourself on the doorknob or a piece of metal. You get that static shock. Well, that's because of that friction and the rubbing, of uh, rubbing off of electrons of your body. Uh, so it's the same process here. So we end up kind of like a battery the, of, of this cloud. This cloud makes kind of a battery and we have a positive and negative charge. Um, the Earth itself is going to have positive charges and negative charges, but since we know that like charges repel one another, these negative charges that were at the surface of the Earth will now get pushed down and be repelled by these charges and the negative charges will get pushed down deeper into the earth. So you end up with negative charges at the bottom of the cloud and then you end up uh, with positive charges at the surface of the earth. And because of that, that difference of charge we know that the negative and the positive will attract one another. So this positive will attract to the negative, the negative will attract toward the positive, and that's when we get our lightning bolt. Okay. And interestingly enough, um, the lightning that we normally see of um, lightning from cloud from the sky to the ground only make up about one third of all lightning strikes. The rest of the lightning strikes occur from cloud to cloud, 
So you can you know, look at this picture here, and you can see the probability or the possibility of this positive charge attracting that negative charge, and you end up with a lightning strike from this cloud to this cloud. Or it can be within uh, the same cloud, so this positive charge and this, these negative charges. All right, or you know, all the way across here. So, um, you know, many of the lightning, in fact, the majority of the lightning strikes that you see in a lightning storm isn't from cloud to the ground. It will be actually from cloud to cloud, um, and so uh, that's that's the story of uh, storm clouds and lightnings.